wrong, miss. Isla, what's the matter? I'm so sorry, but my nerves are going to pieces. Why were you following me? Following you, miss? Yes, following me. Miss Crane asked you a question. I'm afraid the young lady's imagination is getting the better of her, my lord. Don't be impertinent. Someone's put a bolt on the outside of my bedroom door. What for? Bolt? You mean you can be made prisoner in your own room? Yes. Do you know anything about this? A very queer, my lord. Answer my question. I can only repeat. A very queer, my lord. The insolence of you two men is becoming intolerable. Really? Yes, mother? I want to talk to you. And to you too, Isla. I thought I heard someone scream. Yes, Mother, you did. It was Isla. And no wonder. You ought to control yourself. I'm sorry, Lady Lebanon, but there's a limit. Can't you explain? Well, it, it's this house. I don't know what it is, but there's something about it that's unnerving, that, that's terrifying. Isla, you're disappointing me. You're just being hysterical. Oh, but I'm not. So we're insolent, are we? <laughs> Well, I think Isla's perfectly right, Mother. This whole place is like a tomb or a condemned cell. Don't talk nonsense. I can't think why on earth Isla sticks it. If you had a mother and two young sisters dependent on your employer for a monthly allowance, you would do precisely what Isla is doing. Well, that's not very sporting, Mother. Will you please be quiet? Someone has put a bolt on the outside of Isla's bedroom door. Will you put yourself in her place? If I were in her place, I should take no notice of it. Was that bolt put there on your instructions, Lady Lebanon? No, it was not. Mr. Ferraby. You can show him in, Gilda. Yes, my lady. Who on earth is Ferraby? An architect from London. He's come to inspect the Priory with a view to restoration work. About time, too. How do you do, Mr. Phillippe? How do you do? This is my secretary, Miss Crane, my son. How do you do, Miss Crane? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Take off? Oh, very badly. Good, there's two of us. How about around? Mr. Phillippe is here on a professional visit. You'll find that certain portions of the house are in urgent need of repair. That's putting it rather mild, then. Under no circumstances must the character of the building be altered. I must insist on that. Oh, of course not. I quite agree. Here is a plan of Mark Sprouty. Miss Crane will show you round. Yes, Lady Levin. Will your work take long? I expect to finish my examination of the building in about a week. What a marvellous old place this is. Yes. Excuse me, Miss Crane. Uh, could I speak to you a moment? Yes, Jackson. Just one minute. What is it, Jackson? I just wanted to remind you about the fancy dress dance at the Institute. Oh, I hadn't forgotten. I expect I'll go for a while. I'm going as sweet Nell of Old Drury. I've got my oranges and everything. I'm sure you'll look lovely, Jackson. <laughs> now, Mr. Ferriby. Well, let's take a look at the plan. Well, I can't see why he has to stay in the village. Why can't we put him up here? He's a very decent sort of fellow, and I need some companionship. He cannot stay here. Well, why on earth not? Because I say so. And as for discharging Gilder and Brooks, it's quite out of the question. Everyone notices how those two fellows behave. I'm the laughing stock of the whole village. Has Stud told you that? Stud? Oh, no. I wouldn't discuss anything like that with him. I'm not quite sure that Stud is the kind of man I want at Mark's Priory. Why, you're not thinking of dismissing him. I mean, he's an awfully good chauffeur, and I like him. I suppose the truth of the matter is he doesn't suit Dr. Amersham. I never consider Dr. Amersham's views. I neither ask his advice, nor am I guided by him. Marry Isla. Marry 
Yeah, she's of the same family. Her grandfather was a younger brother of your grandfather. Well, I suppose I shall have to marry sometime, but... I told Stubb there's something wrong with the auto-vac in my car. The auto-vac, did you say, sir? Yes, tell him to get it right at once. Certainly, Doctor. Uh, her ladyship is in the library. Isla is in every way a good match. She's no money, but that doesn't matter. She's of the same blood, and that's all that counts. Why you asked me to come down to tell me you want him to marry Isla? I had to leave a very sick patient. You have no patience. I doubt whether there's anyone in London foolish enough to employ you. You employ me? Hello. That door handle's rather unique, isn't it? Yes. That's the old Lord Lebanon's room. He died in there after a very long illness. It's locked. It's been locked ever since he died. Lady Lebanon will never allow it to be opened. Before I get through, I may have to have a look inside. Why doesn't he get a chauffeur to do his own dirty work? I'm afraid I don't know. What a gentleman, eh? And what a doctor. If a ladyship knew as much as I know, he wouldn't last five minutes in this place. Indian Army, eh? I can tell you a few things about the Indian Army. Dad. Good afternoon, my lord. Do you want your car? No. Dr. Amersham called. I thought I'd come out for a breath of fresh air. Mm, I know. Well, he's doing himself proud, ain't he? Makes mine look pretty shabby, doesn't it? Cost a couple of thousand if it cost a penny. You wanted me? Where's his lot? Out in the garage, talking to Stad. All right, you look. Stad must go. He's been repeating village gossip. Yes, the sooner he goes, the better, I should say. Well, I'll be getting back. I want you to stay. No, I've rather an important appointment. I you. want you to stay. I've had a room prepared for you. Very well, if you insist. By the way, this marriage, what's Isla got to say about it? I haven't spoken to her yet. By the way, did you ever meet Stud in India? He was stationed at Delhi. Delhi? When? I don't know, but from what I've heard, he's told people he knew you there. If her ladyship knew as much as I know, she wouldn't let him inside the house. Well, what do you know about him? At the right time, I'll have a few words to say. Did you know him in India? Oh, oh I knew him all right. Oh, good Lord, here he comes. I'm off. Goodbye. Well, Stud, my car finished? No, it isn't. I'm afraid it won't be until the morning. I'm going to dance. Who gave you permission? I don't need permission. It's my night off. I think you'd better start looking for another job, Stud. Oh, and who are you to tell me to look for another job? And what sort of job, Doctor? Signing other people's names on checks? If I get another job, it'll be an honest job. It won't be robbing a brother officer. You can take that from me. What the devil are you talking about? Are you off your head? You know what I'm talking about, all right. And whatever job I take, I shan't be pinched for it or go up for trial for it or be kicked out of the army for it. You keep your filthy mouth shut. I'll keep my mouth shut until I choose to open it. <laughs> Your costume is very striking, Stud, if I may say so. Oh, do you think so, Miss Crane? I uh, brought it back from India with me. I think your wife looks perfectly exquisite, Mr. Tilling. Yes. And you made it yourself. How very clever of you. Swiss, isn't it? <laughs> no, Dutch, you're supposed to be. Oh, dear, 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 what is the matter with me, of course?
Thank you, Miss Crane. Thank you, Stud. Well, that was very jolly. And now we're going to have a gentleman's excuse me dance. Excuse me. Can I have this dance, please? Yes, certainly. May I this dance, please? Do you mind, Jim? Of course he doesn't mind. Why does one come to a dance? To dance, surely. <laughs> Bless me, I promised to help with the refreshments. And here I stand listening to your talk. <laughs> There's your old man as happy as ever. So jealous, he, he frightens me. Him? You should worry. Oh, it's all very fine for you. You don't have to live with me. And neither will you much longer. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm afraid this is called a gentleman's excuse me, darling. Oh, is it? Thank you. After this dance, I'm going out the back for a smoke. Come out as quickly as you can. With Jimmy here? I can't. You must. It's most important. Only for a minute. I've got to talk to you. Excuse me. Excuse me. So this is nightlife in Mark Thornton. Yeah. You're not bored, are you? Not a bit. It's grand. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Drink the vicar in mind if I chuck that fellow out. He's quite within his rights, you know. He's got the technique of a horsefly. There she goes. There she goes. I said she'd follow him out. Do you still feel the same about coming away with me? Of course I do. Excuse me. What you say this dance is called? A gentleman's excuse me. Well, I hope I'm a gentleman, but if it goes on much longer, it's going to bring out the beast in me. Uh, excuse me. Ah, excuse us. I must go now. You mustn't see us here together. All right, same place tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. That's right. Yes, I'm going to find this work very interesting. That is, if Lady Lebanon approves my suggestions. Oh, I'm sure she will. Well, it's good to know you're on my side, anyway. There are footmen here. Oh, yes, I remember. One of them opened the door to me. Not very much like footmen, are they? Oh, you don't know how they terrify me. Ever since I came here. <laughs> that ghastly sound, what was it? I don't know. It came from over there. I'll go and see what's the matter. I'm coming with you. I'll get a torch. Strangled with a scarf. What puzzles me is that he was strangled with a scarf that came from India. Well, there's one crumb of comfort, Totty. Your brains are on the job. Well, as a matter of fact, this Mark's Priory business is perfectly simple to me. Really? You must be quite a genius. Funny nobody's ever noticed it. There's a lot of jealousy going on in this building. Go in. Oh, take this to records, please. Thank you, sir. Well, come on, Toddy. Let's have the deductions of your mastermind. It doesn't require a mastermind to work this one out. Stud's carrying on with the wife of Tilling. Yes. Lady Watson names Ed Gamekeeper. Tilling is a quarrelsome sort of cuss, very jealous of his wife, so he strangles Stud. 
Well, go on. What do you mean, go on? That's all there is to it. Is that so? Well, if it's as simple as all that, why haven't the local police disposed of the case? Search me. No, Toddy, there's a lot more in this than meets the eye. Hello? Car's waiting, sir. Right up. Go on, Toddy. I still think Tillin's our man. He'd have used his hands, not an Indian scarf. Oh, well, we'll see. When I get down there, I'm going to keep my ears open. Of course you'll keep your ears open. Nature's made them that way. I understand that the scarf used to kill Stug was handed to you by Mr. Ferriby. Yes. And you lost it. I've already explained to about six police officers that I put it in the top left-hand drawer of my bureau. Immediately after Mr. Ferriby and Miss Crane had found the body. A short time afterwards, yes. And yet when the local police arrived, less than 20 minutes later, it had gone. Yes. But how? You were the detective, Mr. Tanner, not I. I don't want to mince words, Lady Lebanon. But your explanation, to say the least, is most unsatisfactory. It is my explanation, nevertheless. That scarf was an extremely valuable clue. Is there anything else you want to ask me? I'm rather anxious to meet Dr. Amersham. Is he likely to be here today? Why, he wasn't here at the time of the crime. He left for London after dinner. Just the same, I'd like to see him. That is Lord Lebanon. Plays rather well, if I may say so. May I meet him? Come this way. This gentleman is from Scotland Yard. Oh, how do you do, officer? That is right, isn't it, officer? I'm Chief Inspector Tanner, Lord Lebanon. Good morning. I beg your pardon, Inspector. Good morning. This is an absolutely dreadful business. He was such a decent fellow. I hope to goodness you find out who the murderer is. I hope so, too. Well, if I can be of the slightest assistance in any way, don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you. Is it possible for me to see the gentleman that found the body, Mr... Why, Ferriby, of course. Oh, he'll be about the place somewhere. My son will look after you, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Tanner. Certainly. This way, Inspector. Shouldn't be difficult to find him. He must be around the place somewhere. Exchange? Give me Barclay double five, double five. And quickly, please. Hello. Is that you? Men from Scotland Yard are here. Scotland Yard? It's imperative you should come down this evening. Oh, very well. I'll be there. He was lying here, face downwards. And the scarf, you say, had a little metal tag in one corner. That's right, and some words in Hindustani in another corner. The maker's name, I imagine. Mm, I don't think we can gain anything by remaining here. Oh, Isla. Oh, this is Chief Inspector Tanner of Scotland Yard. Miss Crane, my mother's secretary. How do you do? It's about poor Stud's death, isn't it? Yes, I suppose you can throw no light on the matter? No, how could I? It's all been a terrible shock to her, as you can imagine. Yes, I quite understand. Oh, excuse me. Would you mind if I have a word in private with Mr. Tanner? Oh, of course not. Inspector, did my mother by any chance tell you that Dr. Amersham wasn't here when the crime was committed? She said he dined here and left for London early. Why will she persist in saying that? Why, isn't it true? No. Dr. Amersham spent the night here. Are you certain of that, Lord Lebanon? Absolutely. You see, I saw him driving off this morning at about seven o'clock. I say, you won't tell anybody I told you, will you? Well, you were bound to find out sooner or later, weren't you? What's the matter? He's been asking questions. Mr. Tanner. The police officer? Mm. What questions did he ask? Did he say anything about Amersham? Oh, he didn't mention his name. You must pull yourself together, Isla. Yes, but it's all so dreadful. Well, I appreciate your help very much, Lord Lebanon. Good afternoon. Cheerio, Inspector. Good afternoon, my lord. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure. Have you got one? Yes. Oh, quite, yes. Huh. He liked that. I got away with the aristocracy. Now how to handle them. I'm much more interested in your handling of the servants. There's enough in there to fill Wembley Stadium. You've got no information out of them, of course. Not a sausage. But there's an interesting thing the butler told me. None of the servants are allowed in the main part of the house after eight o'clock at night. Those two footmen take over. Hmm. That's certainly interesting. Ferriby's positive. He saw them in the grounds just before he heard the scream. You mean the footman? Yes. What they got to say for themselves? Oh, they admitted it. Said they were out for a bit of fresh air. Saw nothing, heard nothing. Rum blokes. But I don't think they were sprucing. Why? Because I'm sure Tillin's our man. Well, I'm not. Anyhow, we're going to see him now. Did Stud ever hint to you that he had an enemy? Somebody who might do him an injury? No, he didn't. Well, let me put it like this. Did Stud, 
to your knowledge, before his death, do anything to incur the displeasure of someone else? Not that I know of. You and your husband quarrelled on the way back from the dance, didn't you? Yes. About Stud? Yes. Have you ever threatened to kill him? Oh, he was in a temper. I expect we both said things we didn't mean. Stud was a friend of yours, wasn't he? Did you hear my question? I asked you if Stud was a friend of yours. I was going to run away with him. That's the truth. What are you doing here? We're from Scotland Yard. What are you asking my wife? Questions. I now propose to ask you some. What do you know about the murder of Arthur Studd? Only what I read in the papers. Can you account for your movements on the night of the crime? Well? I went to the dance at the Institute with my wife and came home with her. Did you quarrel with her on the way back? We had some words, yes. What about? It's about her friendship with Stud, wasn't it? Yes. Did you go out again? After you came back from the dance, I mean. I did. Where? Hampstead Woods. Well, at that time of night, why? There's been a lot of poaching there lately. I see. And you saw or heard nothing unusual? No. You'd every reason to dislike Stud, hadn't you? He was trying to steal my wife. I'm glad he's dead. That'll be all for now. Thank you. You haven't seen the last of us, so you needn't think you have. Well, did you write that? Fred, sir. It's terrific. But aren't you glad that you're you and not me? Well, how do you mean? Well, you can lead a normal life, marry whom you please. Well, can't you? No, because unfortunately I'm Lord Lebanon. If I was someone else, I could play in a dance band. <laughs> yes, I know, it's bad luck. Condemned to a life of boredom. To marry someone, produce children. The line. How I hate the word. It's rather a revolting thought, don't you think, to have to sire children? Not much difference between me and a derby winner. Have another drink? No, thanks. I must go, I'll be locked out of the White Hart. I hope you're comfortable. Oh, yes, it's a nice old pub. Fine. Well, I hope you haven't been bored. Not a bit, it's been grand. I'll come and see you off. Don't you bother, my car's just outside. Good night. Cheerio. See you in the morning. Oh, hello, Mother. Didn't see you sitting all alone there. Now, why that fierce look, Mother? Quite a lot of money is missing from my cash box. Two hundred pounds. Do you know anything about it? Yes, as a matter of fact, I took it. You took it. Why? I sent it to poor Stud's sister. She's his only living relative. I felt fearfully sorry for her. You shouldn't have taken the money without asking me. Well, dash it all, Mother. It is my money. Have you spoken to Isla? No, not yet. I haven't had a chance. Then I beg of you to do so without further delay. You understand? All right. Amersham? I expect so. He's coming here tonight. Right. Well, I'm off to bed. Good. Remember what I said about Isla. Don't worry me, Mother.
want, my lord? Who locked my door? I did. Why? Because there was some trouble downstairs and I didn't want you to be in it. Trouble? Who was it? Nobody you know, my lord. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, get me a drink. Something long and cold. I feel as if I'd been doped. There was something in that whiskey you gave me tonight, wasn't there, Gilda? Yes, there was. I know nothing about it. Where's my mother? In her room. Oh, what did happen? You have to let her come and have a look. Please unlock this door. What was all that noise? What's been happening? Why has Miss Crane's door been bolted? And why hasn't the bolt been removed? That I can't say, my lord. Please see that it is done first thing in the morning, or there'll be trouble. I'm going downstairs. Oh, please, can I come with you? Of course, my dear. Come along. My sacred aunt. Oh, who did this? Someone who doesn't like Dr. Amerson very much. Dr. Am it looks as if a lunatic had been let loose. Yes, he behaved like one anyway. What, what happened to Amerson? He left for London three minutes ago. Great time to go back to London, this time in the morning. Very queer. Well, we certainly do see life. And death. Is Dr. Amersham in? Is he expecting you, sir? I hope not. It's just a little personal matter. Oh, will you come this way, sir, please? I'll tell the doctor you're here, sir. Well, Mr. Tanner, have they managed to discover anything about this wretched business? Nothing very important. I wonder whether you could help us in any way. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. No, I don't suppose I can help you very much. This man Stud wasn't a particularly attractive person. In fact, I had to pull him up on several occasions. He was rather impertinent in his manner, not a particularly good chauffeur. Were you at Mark's Priory when the murder was committed? Does this mean I'm a suspect? Oh, no, Doctor. I'm merely paying a routine call in the course of my inquiries. I see. What was it you asked? If you were at Mark's Priory when Stud met his death. Um, Come, Doctor, surely you can remember what you were doing that night? Of course, I dined with Lady Lebanon. How stupid of him that I'm there so often it's impossible to remember exactly. What time did you leave for London? Well, to the best of my recollection, I must have left the Priory about half past ten. Lady Lebanon puts it at rather earlier than that. Does she? Oh, well, no doubt she's right. I couldn't swear to the exact time. At any rate, it was before the crime was committed. Oh, yes. Um, at least I gather that it happened just before midnight. I've been informed that you did not leave for London that night. What? In fact, you were seen driving away from the Priory early the following morning. Okay. Seven or eight hours after the murder. Who told you that? I'm asking the questions, Dr. Amersham. You still adhere to your story? Mr. Turner, I'm not accustomed to having my word questioned. If you choose to disbelieve me, well... Oh, no, no, not at all, Doctor, not at all. That's a very interesting piece. Yes. I picked it up in India. In Delhi? No, Calcutta. We weren't there long. For some six or seven years, I was in the medical service. Dreadful job. I resigned. Stud's somewhat uneventful history shows that he soldiered in India for a time. Did you ever run across it? My dear sir, have you any idea of the size of India or the number of troops stationed there? It's also said that it's a very small world. Well, Mr. Tanner, if there's anything else you think I can do to help, I'm sure you won't hesitate to call me up. I thank you, Doctor. Oh, by the way, if I'm not being too inquisitive, what's your connection with Mark's Priory? A friend of the family, I presume? Yes, I knew the father of the present Lord Lebanon very well, and as a matter of fact, I'm writing a book on heraldry at the moment with Lady Lebanon. And by way of being a bit of an authority. Well, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Uh, don't bother, I'll see myself out. Lebanon has left some checks on her desk she wants you to sign. All right. I say, Isla. Yes? Isla. Uh, has Mother, by any chance, spoken to you about... About us? Mm hmm Yes, she did. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Rather shook you, I expect, isn't it? Oh, I suppose it was a great compliment. You don't really think it's a good idea, do you? 
I mean, I'm awfully fond of you and all that. Oh, thanks. I can consider myself sacked, eh? Well, don't you think you'd rather sack yourself? <laughs> <laughs> we understand each other, don't we? Yes, I think we do. I say, what about Mother? You know what she is. Well, now, look, suppose we leave things just as they are for the moment. Marvellous idea. We leave things just as they are. <laughs> Isla? Yes? You're a sport. And so are you. You going out or coming in? I was just going to Horsham to do some shopping. Well, take my car. Oh, thank you very much, but um, Mr. Fenneby said he'd take me. Aha. Uh -huh. What do you mean, aha? Uh -huh? Ah, uh ha, -huh ha, -huh. ha. Now you're being silly. Madam, wish to go? Portion, please. As good as that. <laughs> What's the secret of Mark's Priory? <laughs> that sounds like the title of a detective story with Mr. Tanner's the hero. Is he very clever, do you think? Tanner? Sure, he's one of the best men at the yard. I wonder who he suspects. Oh, everybody, I should imagine. <laughs> what a brilliant pianist Lord Lebanon is. Oh, yes, isn't he? Bet you we marry some girl with no ear for music. Lady Lebanon wants me to marry him. Oh, look out, look where you're going. My congratulations. On what? Well, on your forthcoming marriage to Lord Lebanon. Oh, I said Lady Lebanon wants me to marry him. And? Well, I don't want to. I'm glad. I hoped you would be. Oh. It's as clear as mud to me. Whichever way you go, you get back to Amersham. So Tilling's second favourite, is he? Hello? Tanner here. Who? Oh, yes, Marty. Amersham's gone out, has he? And the servants? Good, all right. Tanner here. What about that search warrant? Just ready, sir. All right, I'll collect it on my way down. You know, I've been making a few inquiries on my own. While you've been sleeping soundly in your bed, what have I been doing? Drinking? No, moiling and toiling after the facts, seeking information here, there and everywhere. Amersham's on the police records. You don't say so. It's a fact. I found it in the files myself. Drive into the common danger, find five pounds and he's licensed indoors. I see a really hardened criminal. Has he ever sold bananas after eight? You make me sick. Well, well, well. This is interesting. What is? He's got £20,000 out to his credit at the Metropolitan and County Bank. Well, that's better than a wipe round the ear with a bloater. Let's have a look. £1,000, £10,000, £15,000. Oh. He must be in the wholesale. What are they? Indian scarves. I wonder what Dr. Amersham will have to say about these. Quite a lot if he wants to get out of this jam. We should make up your mind earlier in the day when you want to see me. I had an important engagement tonight. This is your important engagement. For quite a long time I've been doing your dirty work. You've been very well paid. Well, that's just the point. I don't think so. My banking account tells a very different story. <laughs> it's your son's banking account and he very obligingly signs any checks you put before him. The trouble with you is that you've always wanted to handle my son's money and I've always stood in the way. And I shall continue to stand in the way. Is that quite clear? Where are you going? Back to town. You're staying here. Otherwise, there'll be no check for you tomorrow. All right. 
We'll see about that. I don't know, in his room, I suppose. No, he's not. He's just gone out and Brooks was with him. I saw him from my bedroom window. Oh, it's not going to happen again. It mustn't happen again. Jailed in India for forgery. Cashiered from the army. Who'd have dreamt he had a record like that? What an officer and a gentleman, eh? I wonder what he's after now. I'll tell you what he's after. Hmm? He's after Lebanon. Lebanon? Yes, you may be right. It'd be easy. He's a mug. Like taking money from a child. Come in. Will you see Lord Lebanon, sir? Lebanon? That's odd. Bring him in. I wonder what the devil he wants. Good morning, Mr. Tanner. Good morning, Lord Devon. Expect you're rather surprised to see me, aren't you? Yes, but agreeably so, my lord. I'm afraid I don't know very much about Scotland Yard. It's a sort of prison, isn't it? <laughs> Won't you sit down, my lord? Uh, oh, rather, yes, thank you. Yes, it's a cosy little place you've got here. A cigarette, my lord. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tatty. Uh, Totty's the name, my lord. An old Italian family. I beg your pardon. Totty, of course. Oh, it's quite all right, my lord. Uh, late? What do you know about Dr. Amersham? Well, I'll be perfectly frank. I detest the man. I find it hard to speak without prejudice, because I dislike him so much that I find it impossible even to be fair. How long have you known him? Oh, a long time. <laughs> Too damn long. Well, I suppose I'd better begin at the beginning. As a boy, I had rather bad health, but I managed to pass through Sandhurst all right. Up till then, I'd only seen Amersham about half a dozen times. He was my father's doctor. My father, by the way, had been ill for many years. My regiment was sent out to India, and while I was out there, Father died. Oh. May I have an ashtray? An ashtray? <laughs> Certainly, my lord. Thanks. I had a fairly good time in India, until I got a rather bad attack of fever. It must have been pretty serious, because Mother sent out Amersham. He said I ought to go home, and I didn't want to. You know how it is. Quite. Quite. Before we left, something rather serious happened. Amersham formed an attachment for a Eurasian girl. He's a bit of a lad on the quiet, you know. So we've gathered. She was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. She was found in his bungalow, strangled. What? Are you sure? Of course, there was an awful fuss about it, but nothing could be brought home to him, although there were signs of a struggle in his room. How was she strangled? A silk scarf was found round her neck. I feel awfully sick. Could I have a glass of water? Certainly, Dolly. Thanks. I'm awfully sorry. Lord Lebanon. Yes? If anything happened to you, who would benefit? Miss Crane's the heiress. She's my cousin. It rather looks as if I'll have to marry her. Yes, we had a similar case in our family. Does Lady Lebanon know about Dr. Amersham? Well, I'm not sure. I hope not. But surely, Lord Lebanon. Someone listening at that door. Of course, there's nobody listening at the door. People don't do that sort of thing at Scotland Yard. Do you mind looking, please? All right, Tully, open the door. Excuse me, gentlemen, but uh, his lordship left his cigarette case behind, so I brought it up to him. What do you mean by listening at the door? Listening? I wasn't listening. Who told you to come up? The copper downstairs. Have that man followed, Toddy. Well? See, I'm not quite so foolish after all. I thought I got away this morning without them knowing, but Gilda isn't so easy to slip. How long has this spying been going on? Oh, for a long time now. Does Lady Lebanon know? I'm not sure. 
Amersham certainly does. Where is Amersham now? Well, he was at Mark's Priory last night, but he came up to town. At least so Mother said at breakfast this morning. No. Cheerio, Inspector. Good luck. Good morning, and thank you for coming, my lord. Good morning, my lord. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Tito. Tito. I've put a man on that footman fella. Here. He's a cool customer, ain't he? And a dangerous one. I don't underrate the gentleman. What do you think about little old Amersham? Strangling girls in bungalows. What do you think? Well, we've got enough evidence to pinch him, haven't we? When you've learnt your business as a detective officer, which will be somewhere about the year 1990, you'll discover there's always sufficient evidence to pinch people, but generally not quite sufficient evidence to convict them. In other words, we don't pinch him? No, we haven't got to that stage yet, but I don't think we're far off. Hello? Lecture's waiting, sir. All right. Confound that lecture. I'd forgotten all about it. I'm anxious to pay Amersham another visit. Well, why don't you tell him to go and run away and play? I must apologise to you men for again inflicting myself upon you as a lecturer, but you must blame the enforced absence of Superintendent Jarvis. Now, last week I spoke to you about detective work on broad lines. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Marks Priory case, which, as you know, is engaging my attention at the moment. I'll first draw a rough sketch map of the Priory. I say, I hope I'm not too terribly late. As a matter of fact, you're functionally late. It's a bit grim, isn't it? But honestly, Ninth. I could... Ninth. Uh, Featherston Hall. Pronounced Chumley, I suppose. Yeah. Sit down. Mark's Priory is the seat of the Lebanons, a very old family that settled in England during the Crusades. Uh, the present Lord Lebanon is a young man of 25, 26, who lives at the Priory with his mother, a typical English aristocrat of the old school. On the night of the 18th, there was a fancy dress dance at the Village Institute of Mark Thornton, some two or three miles from the Priory. Stud, the chauffeur, went to this dance in the costume of an Indian servant. There was also present a man named Tilling, a gamekeeper on the Lebanon estate, and his wife. Tilling was jealous of the murdered man, and not without cause. Let me now bring some, some other interesting characters onto the stage. stage. Dr. Lester Charles Amersham. Dr. Amersham. Well, there you Dr. Amersham. Please stand at the moment. Sergeant. Yes, sir? You've been following me, I hope. Oh, yes, sir. Well, what did I say? Uh, what's that, sir? What did I just say? Oh, you said, sir, that... Uh, well, I couldn't say it as well as you did, sir. You, 208. What do you deduce from my review of the case? Well, that's a rough guess. I don't want a rough guess. I want deduction, sound reasoning. Well, uh, it's all so frightfully involved, isn't it, sir? As you say, it's all so frightfully involved. Sit down, you twerp. You, 30. What's your opinion? I think the evidence points clearly to the doctor, Amersham. We agree with you. I expect to charge him within the next 24 hours. All along the line, Lady Levelin... Not while I'm lecturing, please. An important message, sir. Give it to the sergeant there. As I was saying, for some reason, Lady Lebanon has been doing her utmost to shield Amersham. Now, I should like to have your theories as to why a woman of this type should want to protect a scoundrel like Amersham. Excuse me, sir. What is it? Whereabouts is the garage? Just there. Why? I gather you've no doubt that Amersham murdered Stud. Not the slightest doubt. Why? Oh, I was just wondering, who murdered Amersham? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Amersham was found half an hour ago in that garage, strangled. And here we are, right back to where we started. For the first time, I'm beat. I admit it, I'm beat. Then the outlook is bleak. Just as we were going to put the bracelets on Amersham. Got a match? Yes. Well, let's review the case briefly and see where we get. I'll tell you where we get. Deeper in the sugar. Here, there's something fishy about those footmen. If they're footmen, I'm gandy. We can't ascribe any motive to them. Whereas Lady Lebanon... What, eh? Amersham had a hold on her. Yes. And what about that room she won't open? Now oh, you're getting somewhere. Why is she so terrified of anybody seeing inside it? So it looks as though we've got a pinch of female lady aristocrat, eh? Before I left the yard, I cabled India. 
The reply is to be brought to me at Mark's Priory as soon as it comes. Or sooner. I've got an idea, Tony, that the solution to the Mark's Priory mystery will be found either in that reply or in the locked room or both. And or the bathroom here, there or anywhere. What was he strangled with, I wonder? And what's become of it? We've made a careful search, but found nothing. It's attacked some yards away and dragged in here. You can see, look. Well, Doctor? Been dead over 12 hours, and I'm not prepared to give the exact time. Oh, that's near enough at the moment. Can the body be moved now? Oh, yes, Doctor. I shall be in the house if you want me. Right. Oh, uh, Tony. Yes? You'd better see the coroner's officer. You can't get that wrong, can you? last Monday. I had such a charming letter from her. The two girls are at school and so happy. She said how wonderful it was to feel safe and secure after the bad times she'd been having. Oh, please don't. Now pull yourself together and be sensible. You know I don't like being disturbed when I'm trying to work. I want to know why you went to Scotland Yard this morning. There are things going on in this house that are getting on my nerves. Besides, I wanted to go and I went. If there's anything for the police to find out, they'll find it out without your help. I say, what do you think about Amersham? I'm not going to discuss him with you. Did you say anything about him? No. Nothing in particular. You're staying here tonight, Amersham, her ladyship says, or else there's no check for you tomorrow. Very quarrelsome they were. Lady Lebanon knew that you overheard them. And she knew all right. You should have seen the look she gave me. And this morning she discharged you. Yes, gave me a month's wages at nine o'clock. Very anxious to be rid of me, she was. All right, let her live. I wish to heavens I'd never left India. You are not to go to London without asking me. And you are not to speak to the police about anything that happens in this house. Do you understand? Why did Gilder follow me? He did so on my instructions. Is that sufficient? Just a minute, I want to talk to you. You have an account at the London and Counties Bank, haven't you, Gilder? Very clever of you to find out. Yes, I have. Unusual, isn't it, for a footman to have an account at a London bank? Oh, some of us are very thrifty. A very substantial balance, I hope. Three or four thousand pounds. I've speculated rather wisely. I want you too. Did you hear anything last night? No shouts or screams or anything? No, sir. The night the chauffeur stud was murdered, did you hear anything then? No, sir. If you remember, I told you so when you were here at the time. Mm. Oh, uh, uh, pardon me, sir. I believe I saw you talking to her ladyship's maid, uh, Jackson. And I believe I saw you listening. She was discharged this morning, sir. So anything she may have told you was most likely spiteful and untrue. Thank you for the tip. I'd like to see Lady Lebanon now. Very good, sir. I will tell her ladyship. Will your inquiries be finished today? I don't think so. Then I'll order a room for you at the White Hart. Thank you, I've already ordered the rooms. Perhaps I might look over the house. Of course, but I understood the man was killed in the garage. The man? Dr. Amersham. He was killed outside the garage and dragged inside afterwards. Something burning? Oh, I forgot. It's silk. I was making a doll's dress for the bazaar. I found the cuttings on my desk and I burnt them. 
They weren't cuttings, it was off a piece. The scarf that killed Stud, which you say was lost, had in one corner a little metal tag. Mr. Fellaby was quite positive about that. You remember? I do not. Then perhaps this will refresh your memory. This tag that I've just picked out of the fire. Well? It conveys nothing to me. It would have conveyed quite a good deal to Dr. Amersham. I don't understand you. I found several such scarves in Amersham's desk when I searched it yesterday. You know, Lady Lebanon, I'm not quite without intelligence. Why do you insist on telling me such obvious lies? Why don't you arrest me? I'm not going to arrest you. You want to ask me questions? I'm afraid I'm not going to be very much help to you. I'm hoping you will be. I should not only ask you questions, Lady Lebanon, but I should tell you one or two facts of which you believe and hope that I'm ignorant. That amuses you. I don't grudge me a little amusement in the middle of this horrible day. I understand there's a room upstairs which is always kept locked on your strict instructions. The lumber room? On the first floor. One of the best positions of the house. That's a queer place for a lumber room. That room is never opened. Still, I'd like to see it open. Mr. Tanner, I'll tell you the truth. My husband died in that room. It has never been opened since. I should still like to see it open. I'm afraid you can't. I'm sorry, but I must insist. Be reasonable, Mr. Tanner. What is there in that room that could interest you except a few pictures? I should have thought the scope of your inquiry lay outside this house. You realize I can get a search warrant? That would be an outrageous thing to do. No magistrate in the county would grant you such a thing. Doing a little measuring up. Yes. Have you ever seen inside here? No, uh, not since the old chap died. Well, there's three feet I can't account for between this room and the next. Is that so? Now, I wonder what that means. I've told you everything I know. When did you last see Dr. Amersham alive? Last evening. I, I don't know exactly when. He was here at 11 o'clock last night. Probably until within a few minutes of his death. You've been questioning my servants? I've been questioning a number of people. I think you should have come to me first. Well, I have come to you. And you can't tell me what time you last saw Dr. Amersham alive. Here's a man murdered. Rather an impressive fact. I don't follow you. Supposing you had a friend who soon after you saw him met with a fatal accident. Wouldn't you say immediately, why, I was speaking to him only an hour before. Dr. Amersham was not a friend. He was rather a self-willed man who saw no one's point of view but his own. So the fact that he was murdered within a hundred yards of this room really doesn't matter. Isn't that a little insolent, Mr. Tanner? Yes, I... I suppose it is. But doesn't it strike you, Lady Lebanon, that your own attitude is somewhat peculiar? I... I won't say arrogant. Why was Dr. Amersham here last night? He came to see me. As a doctor? Yes. At your request? No, he just dropped in. At 11 o'clock last night? I had a touch of neuritis in my arm. But you didn't send for him? No. He just guessed you had neuritis. How long was your husband, the late Lord Lebanon, ill before he died? Fifteen years. Who attended him? Dr. Amersham. Although he was ill for such a long time, he died rather suddenly, didn't he? Yes, he did. I have here a copy of the certificate. It's signed by Lester Charles Amersham. Well, what of it? During his illness, you administered his affairs, you and Dr. Amersham. Yes. Why did you marry again? That is not true. Why did you marry again at Petersfield Parish Church, and why did you marry Lester Charles Amersham? Who told you? Somerset House. Why did you marry Amersham three months after your husband died, and why did you keep the marriage a secret? He forced me into marriage. Dr. Amersham was an adventurer of the lowest kind. He was a penniless doctor in the Indian Army. He forced me into marriage. How? You know you can't blackmail people unless you know something to their detriment. I shall not tell you. Had you broken the law? I know that he had. He was a thief and a forger. He'd been kicked out of the army. To revert to your first husband, Mrs. Amersham. I shall be glad if you will call me Lady Lebanon. Who saw the late Lord Lebanon after his death? Dr. Amersham. Did you? No. Anybody else? Gilder and Brooks. Nobody else? No, they did everything. No outsider was called in. I see. And Dr. Amersham signed the certificate. This morning, my interest in this case was purely academic. Except for my interest in Dr. Amersham, now I'm very much interested in you and in this house and in that room which you say is never opened. 
Well, you got the key? I have an idea, I may be wrong, but Dr. Amersham's hold over you had something to do with that room. No. It had something to do with... with my past. It took an effort to say that, and it's not true. You know, you're one of those people one reads about. Blood proud. By the way, you must be a Lebanon yourself. How clever of you to have guessed that. My husband was my cousin. I go back in the direct line to the fourth baron. Before there was a history of England, there was a history of the Lebanons. And it must go on. It would be wicked if the line were to be broken. Well, what do you got? Yeah, this will take some beating. Huh? Full house. Ladies on the roof. Well, I am glad you fellows are staying the night. I'm afraid my mother's not quite so glad, though. No, she didn't seem to be. And I'll tell you somebody else who's absolutely sick about your staying. Those yeah, look out. What do you want, Gilda? I'm only going to answer the door, my lord. How I hate those fellows. Why don't you get rid of them? Oh, I do, regularly. Six times a week. But they're still here. Inspector Tanner here. Not an earthly. I'm thrown in. I'm afraid, eh? I made half a crown. Half a crown? Well, what do you do? For you, sir. I'll take your hand. That means goodbye to my winnings. Here. Is that the reply from India? I beg your pardon. Well, Inspector, is the news grave or gay? Any nearer solution? Five bob. Three gentlemen will be coming down from London in the morning. I think they'll help me to clear things up. I want you to return to the yard at once with an important message. Very good, sir. Do you want anything to eat? No, thank you, sir. All right, I shan't be long. I've got it. Got what, my lord? Ta-dum, ta-da-dum, tum, 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 ta-da-da, ta-dum, tum, tum. What's the matter with him? Well, that's what's called inspiration. Oh, is that what it is? Well, you ought to take something for it. Take this message to Superintendent Lawson at once. It's very urgent. Right, sir. I'll see you at the door. Show me a minute, Toddy. Right. There's a shortcut to the main road. Turn left at the lodge gates and first right, that cuts out the village. Thank you, sir. Well, good night. Good night, sir. Here, take this. You sure you're all right? Only just, sir. Well, I'll get off at once. I'll be quick, all right, so don't you worry. I'll send you stop here than me. Even the smell of an oil rag. We're up against somebody diabolically clever and almost as quick as light. Look! This is a nice place. I don't think. That's the room Lady Debenham won't open. Well, it'll be open tomorrow. I've applied for a search warrant. There's something I ought to tell you. I've discovered there's about three feet unaccounted for between that room and the next one. Well, there must be a passage. That's exactly what I thought. Now, take a look at this. That's not stone. That's iron, painted to look like stone. <laughs> Stoner crows. Now that's something I didn't discover. There must be a door there, but it's fastened on the inside. Well, we're going to this later on. Come on, Toddy. And there's his lordship playing the piano as happy as you like. He's missed a bit of fun tonight, hasn't he? I've had some cases in my life, but this one beats them all. Here, you! Hello, what's been happening to you? I fell asleep in my pantry. Fell another the top. Oh, yes. I went out a little while ago for a smoke. When you were dozing in the pantry, you didn't dream about bicycles by any chance. Motor bicycles for choice. 
No, I dreamt about uh, earthquakes. <laughs> now, don't you get funny with me. Supposing I decide that you and Gilda know a good deal more about these murders than you're prepared to admit. Supposing I decide to hold you as accessories and take you down to the station tonight. If I've said anything I shouldn't have said, I beg your pardon, sir. Let's give him something to think about. Is there anything wrong, miss? Come down here, you. What's the matter with the young lady? I don't know what you mean, sir. I heard somebody cry out, so I came to see what was wrong. Is there anything the matter, miss? Something brushed past me in the passage. Would you please see me to my room? Gilda, get me a scotch and soda, will you? You gentlemen care to join me? Thank you, my lord. How's the music coming along? Oh, all right. I haven't quite got it yet. So I thought I'd come out for a drink and a breather. But I won't go to bed till I do get it, even if I have to sit up all night at that piano. Well, speaking for myself, my lord, I hope you do. It sounds nice and cheerful. And I'm partial to a little jazz now and again. Jazz? Thank you. That makes me lord. Gilda, how often have I told you to ring the siphon and decanter? Sorry, my lord. Well, Mr. Tanner, are we going to have any fun and games tonight? There are 40 men in the grounds. All trained, skilled men from Scotland Yard. They arrived by tender about five minutes ago. This house is surrounded. There'll be no murder at Mark's Priory tonight. 40 men? What organization? I should have said 36. I was counting the chauffeurs. Well, that's marvelous and very comforting. Cheers. All right. Good luck. Taste that. What is it? I've tasted stuff like that before. Bitter? Yes. Does yours taste bitter? No, mine was all right. Mine's okay. There's something on tonight. They want me out of the way. I wonder what they're going to do to you. What? Well, they won't do anything to us. Don't be so sure. Amersham was confident that nothing would happen to him. Yes, but... Uh, Don't worry. It's me they want. Isla, open the door. I want to talk to you. Is anything the matter? Isla, I want you to marry my son. Anything may happen tonight. I may be... I want you to marry him tomorrow morning. But I can't. It's quite impossible. Yes, yes it can be arranged. Listen, Isla. He's the last of the Lebanons. Do you realize that? The last link in the chain. A weak link. Have you forgotten that you're a Lebanon yourself? Whatever happens, your children must bear the name. Oh, no, please don't ask me to do it. Please don't. If you find your life with him impossible, I shall be very understanding. Oh, no, I can't do it. I can't possibly do it. Young Therabee, I told you I should be very understanding. Don't you realize what a wonderful thing you'll be doing? The family will gain a new strength. The Lebanon women have always been greater than the men. Yes, but why do you insist that I marry him? There must be hundreds of girls who'll be only yes. too... What's that? It's Gilda. Those men are getting out of hand. I may not be able to keep them in control after tonight. Well? There are 40 new men coming down by tender from Scotland Yard. They're in the ground somewhere. If only we could get rid of them. Brooks is getting restless, says he's going to turn it in. The detectives are frightening him. Do they frighten you? No, nothing frightens me. I'm in it now and I'll see it through. Tell Brooks there's a thousand pounds for him. If only we can get this business through without discovery. It was as though a bull had been let loose. The furniture was all smashed up. <laughs> it was just as though there'd been a real wild party. Yes, I heard about it. Amersham was in it, and those two footmen. I'd hate to think that Mother had anything to do with it. As a matter of fact, I can't imagine her in an undignified situation. No, neither can I. Oh, well, I gotta go along and finish my symphony. Well, I thought it was a rhapsody. 
It may turn out to be either. But whichever way it is, I'll finish it tonight or bust. Cheerio. What about those 40 men in the ground? How about their grub? There are not 40 men or women or children in the ground. But now, you will you keep your big mouth shut? Well, what's the idea? The idea, Totty, is that I want all the murders of tonight to be committed inside this house. Well, how many do you expect? I think you'll be the first. What? Ah, you're pulling more leg. Yes? The gun's gone from my drawer, all right? You're a damn fool not to keep it in a safer place. Why didn't you carry it on you? I'd give a whole lot to be out of this. There's something that happens tonight, you see if I'm not right. Did he drink that stuff? Of course he didn't drink it. You made it too strong. I told you he'd taste it. But, uh... <laughs> ah, the brothers make a muck. Anything I can do for you? No, thanks. I suppose you'll be up all night. Well, if you're up all night, sir, I shall be up all night. Well, well, now, won't that be nice? Clear out and stay out. I want to talk to Tanner. All right, Toddy. Do as Lord Lebanon wishes. <laughs> I am clever, you know. You must admit that. Yes, you are. No further. I made those records in London. Four of them. <laughs> that fooled you. Brooks and Gilda were puzzled, too. They couldn't make it out at all. Oh, I fooled them in lots of ways. Won't you sit down? Sit down! I say, don't you think it's about time this line was wiped out? The line? I don't understand you. What do you mean? Well, this sort of thing has been going on for I don't know how many years. You asked Mother. She's got all their dates and their names. We Lebanons have always been like this. Father was like that. He was 15 years in that room upstairs. <laughs> Mad as a damned hatter. Yes. He was clever too. 
He could get in and out of that room just as he liked. Through the concealed door in the front of the house. So you found out about it, have you? Brooks and Gilda don't know about it. Have you told them? No. They looked after my father too, you know. Just like me. Yes, I guess that. But he never strangled anybody. You know the first time I saw it done? It was in Delhi. Quite a little fellow came up behind a big man. He put a cloth round his neck. By God, he was dead. Fascinating. I tried it on a girl. An Indian girl. She went out like that. Oh, it's wonderful when people die quickly. I got lots of these. I brought them home from India. Amersham took some away from me, but he didn't know I'd got plenty more. I'm not a big fellow, but I'm very strong. Feel my arm. Of course, there was an awful fuss about the Indian girl. Amersham had to go out to India to bring me home. Take your hands out of your pockets. Do you mind if I smoke a cigar? Oh, no, of course not. Please do. You know that room Mother didn't want you to see? It's all padded. Rubber cushions around the walls. I have to go there sometimes when I realize things. When you get a little tiresome. I know what I'm saying. When I realize things. Oh. Don't touch me. Sit down. I only wanted a light. Oh, yes. Are you friend or foe? Why, what a question. Of course, I'm a friend. What about those three men who are coming down tomorrow? They're coming down to see me. That's not true. They're coming to see me. To certify me. I know. And I'll fool them. As I fooled you. And Amersham. And all the clever people. <laughs> I think it's about time the whole line was wiped out. All their shields and escutcheons carry on the line. Isn't it ridiculous? Yes, isn't it? You don't like me, do you? Yes, I do. I've been a very good friend of yours. I was nice to you at Scotland Yard, wasn't I? Oh, yes, of course you were. It was clever of me, wasn't it? I mean, it's the last thing you would have expected. I killed Amersham and then slipped away before they could find him. Yes, that was a stroke. Isla looked awfully like that Indian girl tonight. I came up behind her and I nearly got her. You heard her scream, didn't you? Why did you? And why were you so unkind to Stud? Oh, I, I'm awfully sorry about him. He was such a decent fellow. He was dressed like an Indian. I had to. I nearly got Amersham the other night. By God, he was scared. You're afraid? No. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> I always frighten people. You're not frightening me. Now, be a good lad and give me that gun. Why do you want to fool about with a thing like that? Well, there are lots of things I could do with it. I could fool everybody. I could fool Mother. And you. What are you doing? Give me the revolver. No, I won't. I've always wanted a pistol. You know, I've asked for one dozens of times. Put it away.
being great. Gone out like a candle in the wind. Oh, my God. 